time crystals. Yeah. Um, what are they? These things are, it's a very beautiful idea when we start to um, treat space and time as a um, similar framework. Yes, right. Physical phenomena. Right, that's what motivated it. What yeah. are, first of all, what are crystals? Yeah. And what are time crystals? <laughs> okay, so crystals are orderly arrangements of uh, atoms in space. And uh, many materials, if you cool them down, gently uh, will form crystals. And so we say that that's uh, a, 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 a state of matter that forms spontaneously. And uh, an important feature of that state of matter is that the end result, the crystal, uh, has less symmetry than the equations that give rise to the crystal. So the equations, the basic equations of physics, uh, are the same if you uh, move a little bit. So you can move, a, they're homogeneous, mm -hmm. but crystals aren't. The atoms are in particular places, so though they have less symmetry. Uh, and time crystals are the same thing in time. <laughs> Basically, you, you, but of course it's not, so it's not positions of atoms, but it's ordering, uh, orderly behavior uh, that certain states of matter uh, will arrange themselves into spontaneously if you do them, if you, if you treat them gently and let them do what they want to do. But in de repeat in that same way indefinitely. That's the crystalline form. You can also have uh, uh, time liquids, or you can have all kinds of other states of matter. You can also have space-time crystals where the pattern only repeats if uh, with each step of time, you also move it a certain, a certain direction in space. So, so yeah, so, but it's, it's basically it's states of matter that uh, Obey, that display structure in time spontaneously. So he, here's here's the difference. When it happens in time, uh, it sure looks a lot like it's motion. And if it repeats indefinitely, it sure looks a lot like perpetual motion. Yeah. Like, uh, looks like free lunch. <laughs> and I, well, I was told that there's no such thing as free lunch. Does, does this violate laws of thermodynamics? Uh, no, but it requires a critical examination of the lo laws of thermodynamics. I mean, let me let me say on background that the laws of thermodynamics are not the not fundamental laws of physics. They are things we prove under certain circumstances emerge from the fundamental laws of physics. So right. they're, they're not you know, we don't posit them separately. They're meant, meant to be deduced and they can be deduced under limited circumstances, but not necessarily universally. And we found finding some of the subtleties and sort of accept edge cases uh, where they don't apply in a straightforward way. Uh, and this is one. Uh, so time crystals do obey, do have this structure in time, but it's not a free lunch because uh, although in a sense things are moving, uh, they're they're already doing what they want to do. They're in the mm -hmm. <laughs> so if if you want to extract energy from it, you're going to be foiled because there's no spare energy <laughs> there. You uh, uh, it, it's or, so you you can add energy to it and kind of disturb it, but but uh, you can't extract energy from this motion because it's gonna it wants to do that's the lowest energy configuration that there is. So you you can't get further energy out of it. So in theory, I guess perpetual motion, uh, you would be able to extract energy from it. If, yes. If if such a thing was to be created, you can then milk it for energy. Well, what's but what's usually meant in the literature of perpetual motion is a kind of macroscopic motion that you could extract energy from, and and somehow it would crank back up. Right. That's that's not the case here. If you want to extract energy, you. Uh, this motion is is not something you can extract energy from. If you intervene in the behavior, you can uh, change it, but only by injecting energy, not not by taking away energy.